even though it's not a human being, you have to react to that thing. I mean, there's a thing with the pizzas, and there's little, little faces, okay, and they're supposed to be my friends who died, and there's little screaming faces, and I'm going, okay, this is the yes, okay, <laughs> and react to this little head that's screaming. And th so that is very, that's hard. One thing that helped Lisa on her first feature film was director Rennie Harlan, who was always there to guide the actress through her demanding scenes. He's very aware of everything going on around him, and he reacts to it and responds appropriately. And it's, it's really nice to see that, because there are directors, this is my first feature, but doing other projects, there are directors who don't say boo to you. <laughs> they just say do it. You know, but he is always coming over and saying, this scene, do you like how it works, you know, and how do you want to play? And, and he's always listening and, and wants to get your response and your contribution. For director Harlan, his toughest challenge came when trying to bring all of the special effects elements together for the final battle between Alice and Freddy. Now I think the most challenging sequence is our final church sequence. That's going to involve a lot of makeup effects and mechanical effects and optical effects and stunts and, and it's going to take a couple of weeks to shoot and involves three units and a lot of collaboration from, from different people and that's, that's, that's very hard to coordinate but I think that sequence is also going to be very interesting. To create the dazzling array of special effects called for in this scene, the producers turned to Steve Johnson, whose amazing work can be seen in such films as Ghostbusters and The Howling. What it is, is it's the end sequence. They wanted it to be the most spectacular makeup effect sequence in, the, in this film. And they wanted to really give Freddy finally a real death. And the other ones, he's just kind of poofed away in a puff of light. And they wanted to really let all of the people that he'd killed really get a chance to get back at him and beat the hell out of him this time. So we just carefully and cleverly planned it out so that the basic trick to the thing is intercutting between an oversized prop that stood about 20 feet tall of Freddy uh, and small size props. And with some strange tricks like Dutch angles and a lot of smoke and moving cameras hopefully will fool the, fool the audience and they'll never know the difference between the two. Killing Freddy Krueger, as you might imagine, is no easy task. And to pull it off, Johnson had to use several carefully thought out devices. The nature of this thing was basically that all of the souls that are left from all of the victims Freddy's ever killed throughout his life and death are getting back at him by punching the way back out of him. Not in a bloody sense, but they're stretching through the membrane of his skin in almost a magical sense that they're growing out of him. It looks as though there's arms growing out of him, heads and torsos growing out of him, and beginning to rip him apart as much as they can. To create this illusion, Robert England was first placed into a body rig. Freddy himself fits into it something like this. And his arm goes through the sweater of the dummy, and he, that way it blends off onto his neck. You get his real head and his real arm, so he can do all the motivating. And then we can do anything we want, since this is a dummy back here, and you can see it's fairly well hollow. We have plenty of room to get as many as 12 puppeteers back here to do what we need to do. Next, Steve used one of his favorite special effects to simulate arms breaking out of Freddy's body. What this rig was for is actually one of the funnier effects we did for the film. It, uh, I got a real kick out of it. Um, the camera basically was angled, composed in such a way so that you did not see these tubes coming out of the back. The operator hill here was bent below so that you didn't see that he was there. It was just shot like this. So what you see is you see an arm with, with Freddy's sweater over this with a hole cut in the back so this real arm can come through. It just looks like you're seeing a shot of Freddy from here. And um, you get all the life and motion of a real hand there if you want to demonstrate the real hand. There. Then uh, anyway, what we did is from off camera, we shoved this is maybe not gonna work very well now because it's kind of old, but we shove these arms out. And they reach for his wrist like this. There's another one down here. Move your arm a little bit, Bill. So two arms grow out of his bicep here in a real quick cut and lock onto his wrist. And what happens from that point is uh, to, to get the audience away from the feeling they're seeing in effect, we made this thing. What this did is Robert England actually wore this strapped to his arm. And then we tied these to his wrist like this so then we can get away from just a, a small insert shot like this and see Robert walking around and struggling with these things and they're jointed in the proper places so that it looks like he did a really good job with it it's basically a mime routine so when he moved his arm up and these things were attached it looked like they were pushing his blade arm up towards his face to make him slash his own face with his face with his blade 
But Freddy knew he was really in for a bad day when Steve's special effects struck once more. The last effect shot in the film was, a uh, last effect shot in our part, was this dummy head, where we have pretty much the full orchestration of all these things operating here. We've got, we had probably nine people out of camera range down here grabbing at the guy, and we also had things like, uh, that were just sewn to him, like we have an arm under the sweater, a hole coming through it, and we would glue the arm to him here. Eventually this happens, this, uh, the tension builds up so much, there's one arm grabbing him here, and one arm grabbing him in the eye socket here that it actually rips his head wide open, like that. Now back to the special presentation, USA's Nightmare on Elm Street. To create the illusion that there were living souls inside of Freddy's body trying to get out, this nearly 20-foot tall replica of Freddy's chest was designed and built by Steve Johnson and his crew. The Big Freddy was built large enough so that one or more people could enter through the back and play to the camera stationed in front. And while the actors were inside, other crew members were stationed outside operating other parts to bring Big Freddy to life. First, one of Steve's crew members was placed inside the body where his arm was to break through the skin and tear off part of Freddy's sweater. Once the hole is punched through the skin of Freddy's chest, it must be replaced many times throughout the day. The skin is made from dental dim, a highly flexible rubber latex material. This is the, a very large piece of the dental dam that we use to um, put over the giant Freddy's chest, and then we had actors inside the chest stretching their way out of it. Um, when we shot it, we had them wearing really, really theatrical makeup to kind of match this kind of look. Um, for a couple of different reasons, I'm always afraid that big things, big props always look like big props to me. So we, in this instance, obviously made the little ones look as realistic as possible, but we tried to make the big ones look fake, even in their movements, so we painted them really theatrically. Stretched this stuff over them, and uh, this is kind of how it worked. Go forward with your face real far. Suck it in your mouth. Three actors made to look like the dead victims trapped within Freddy's body are given final touch-ups before entering the oversized replica. Then, with some encouraging words from the crew, it's up to the three actors to push their bodies forward against Big Freddy's chest, simulating the souls trying to escape from their killer's body. A job well done. And all of the effects created by Steve Johnson and his crew combined to make this climactic scene perhaps the most memorable of all the Nightmare films. But could this really be the end of Freddy Krueger? Could the teenagers of Elm Street finally be able to get some rest? As you lay your head on your pillow tonight, remember, in the movies, no one has to die. And Freddy Krueger may be alive and well and waiting for you in dreamland. This is Bill Barry. Good night and pleasant dreams.